Good afternoon. All right, we're just on day one. You can't be not enough yet. Welcome to DC and welcome to the Core Network's 35th annual conference, Thrive, the Power of Community. As you heard, 35 years ago, 16 Service and Conservation Corps directors came together to establish what is today the Core Network. These 16 groundbreaking organizations or leaders believed that they could better achieve their goals by working together than individually, and they were right. They understood the power of community. Today, 35 years later, the Core Network boasts 133 full service and conservation Corps members that operate in every state, the territories, the District of Columbia, collectively engage more than 20,000 young adults and recent veterans, and complete millions of dollars of project work every year. All of this is possible because we communicate, we share ideas, we support each other, and we work to get together around common goals and interests. In short, we are a community. What is a community? Is it a physical space, like a neighborhood or a city? Is it a group of people with a shared identity, like gender, race, ethnicity, or religion? Or is it a group of people with shared interests and goals, like a sports team or a scouting group? The answer is yes, it is all of these things. Most basically, our communities are where we turn to get our physical, social, and emotional needs met. And each one of us belongs to many communities. For example, I'm part of a community of women in leadership roles. I'm part of a community of single mothers. I'm part of a religious community, a political community, a school alumni community. I'm part of a neighborhood community, a parent-teacher community, a soccer mom community, and the list goes on. And I'm sure you can all think of all the various roles that you play and um, communities you take part in. At the heart of it all, I'm part of a small, sometimes healthy community, including two teenage boys and two super hyper dogs that lives at 8632 Chase Glen Circle. Aside from my family, some communities are healthy and help their members thrive, while others, those based on unequal access to power and resources, are not. Healthy communities share a number of common elements. They provide community members with opportunities to uh, meet basic physical needs, like access to food, housing, healthcare, transportation, education, and jobs. They're places where community members can breathe clean air, drink clean water, and exercise, recreate, and rejuvenate in the outdoors. They are places where members feel safe and valued. Healthy communities enable people to pool their resources and voices around common interests and goals. And when I say resources, I'm not just referring to money and influence, because not all communities have access to those things, but I'm referring to intelligence and ingenuity, hard work, dedication, and conviction. Communities with these kinds of assets and this kind of power raise awareness around global issues like climate change. They can raise money and resources for uh, specific causes like uh, victims of disaster. They can change laws and policies like gun control legislation. We've seen it happen time and time again. During last year's conference, we learned about a community in the South Bronx that in the 1970s as a result of housing of discriminatory housing and policing policies was systematically burned to the ground, displacing half a million, nearly half a million black and Puerto Rican residents. We learned, however, that the same community came together, fought back, reclaimed their neighborhood, and rebuilt their community, and that is where they are today. During this year's conference, we will hear about a community in Gulfport, Mississippi, that overcame their differences to fight big business, powerful politicians, disasters like Hurricane Katrina and the BP oil spill to prevent the destruction and development of critical historic sites and wetlands. We'll also hear from Dorothy Stoneman, the founder of Youth Build USA and Opportunity Youth United, and several current and four member, former core members of the year about steps that they are taking individually and collectively 
to affect positive change in their own communities. And these are just few examples of how communities can thrive when they work together to create power. However, a chain, like a chain, is only as strong as its weakest link. A community is only as strong as its most vulnerable members. And unfortunately, there are many communities that do not have access to the resources necessary to thrive. This is where cores come in. The way I see it, cores are communities in and of themselves. Cores can help members meet their basic physical needs. For example, the San, San Jose Conservation Corps builds tiny homes for core members experiencing homelessness. Operation Fresh Start supplies core members with breakfast and lunch five days a week. AmeriCorps Youth Works provides on-site child care for core members with young children. And PowerCorps PHL secures bus passes for core members without transportation. And I know I am just calling out a handful, a tip of the iceberg, of all of the services that you all provide to core members every day. You're all sitting there probably thinking, we do that, we do that, we do. Um, and, and you all, you all are, are amazing communities for core members. Also like a community, cores provide core members with opportunities to achieve self-sufficiency and upward mobility. For example, all of the California and New Jersey youth cores enable core members to finish high school and receive a diploma. Corps like Greater Miami Service Corps and Civic Corps in Oakland prepare young, prepare core members for college and other kinds of post-secondary education. Corps like Civic Works, CUPU, the U.S. Forest Job Corps Centers, and others run sophisticated workforce development programs where core members can earn industry-recognized credentials and pathway and get onto career pathways. Moreover, core members, cores help core members gain access to nature and the great outdoors and teach them about healthy living. Cores like Conservation Legacy and Montana Conservation Corps expose young people to our nation's iconic parks and forests. While programs like Greening of Detroit and Green Corps Chicago create and maintain urban parks right in the city. And every core provides core members with space where they can feel valued. Whenever I ask a core member why they found success at a core program when they did not necessarily find success at another program or school they attended, they say, and I, I think you heard it from, from Harley, um, because they felt like they were part of something bigger, they belonged, they added value, and most importantly, because people in their community cared. To me, that embodies a healthy and thriving community. In FY19 alone, you collectively engaged 22,000 core members. You enabled 2,300 of those core members to obtain a high school diploma or GED. You helped 12,000 12, of those core members earn an industry-recognized credential, and you helped thousands find jobs. And I dare say, you enabled all 22,282 core members to experience nature and the great outdoors, and you definitely made all 22,000 287 core members feel safe and valued. That's what you do. And you do this not only for your core members, but you do it in the communities in which you serve, for the residents of the communities in which you serve. For instance, Green City Force grows pr fresh produce for residents of New York City public housing. Los Angeles Conservation Corps partners to collect and dispense tons of excess food to the communities hungry. Mile High Youth Corps and other youth build programs build low-income housing. The work group in Camden runs a thrift store to provide clothes to low-income community, community residents. Civic Works builds parks and green, cities, green spaces in the city of Baltimore. Earth Conservation Corps in DC helps keep the Anacostia River clean. Power Corps PHL monitors water quality in Philadelphia and the list goes on. So you not only make a difference for young people um, sorry, someone in one of my communities gave me a cold. <laughs> I suspect, I know. Collective, so in terms of project work, collectively in 2019, you built, improved, or maintained over 13,000 miles of trail. That's six times on the Appalachian Trail. You restored 1.4 million acres of wildlife habitat, nearly the size of Delaware. 
You responded to 223 wildfires and natural disasters. You preserved 336 historic structures, and you planted more than one million trees. Further, you leveraged an additional 107,000 volunteers who donated more than half a million service hours, valuing $13.6 million. And that was just 2019. Think of those numbers compounded over 35 years. Together, you have touched the lives of nearly a million young people and completed thousands of projects that improve the health of communities and the well-being of the people who work, live, and play in them. And here at the CORE Network, we are working hard to support your basic needs for funding, project work, advocacy, so that you can continue to, to focus on your communities on the ground. FY19 was another productive year. CORE's collectively secured more than $400 million in funding, including $60 million from our federal land management agency partners and $30 million from AmeriCorps. Here at the CORE Network, we established a technical assistance team and developed a landscape analysis to help us better understand where CORE's are wor working and what they are doing across the country. Through this process, the CORE Net Network was able to help start four new CORE's, expand six existing CORE's, and provide technical assistance, including accreditation, to 20, new, to 20 CORE's. The Gulf Corps team supported seven cores, engaged nearly 100 core members on a dozen, dozens of projects to help the Gulf states recover from the BP oil spill. As part of that effort, they developed a workforce development curriculum and professional development tools that we're hoping to roll out to the entire network later this year. The AmeriCorps team made more than 3,500 AmeriCorps positions and education awards um, available to core members in all of your programs. Under the leadership of the government relations team, we were successful in getting parts of the 21 CSC Act passed and signed into law. We're currently working with our federal partners on implementation. We've made some progress, as many of you know, toward improving the review processes at both the Department of Agriculture and Department of Interior. We worked with partners to keep 25 job core centers and nearly 3,000 core members housed at the U.S. Forest Service. We'll get an update on all of these things tomorrow from our federal partners. And through the Moving Forward initiative, we work together to make environmental stewardship and workforce more accessible to people of color. Nearly 100 core members participated in specially designed academic, workforce, and leadership training. You'll learn more about MFI, our current accomplishments, our ideas for the future, and opportunities to either remain or become involved over the next few days. In sum, the community here at the CORE Network, which I like to refer to as small but mighty, supports your CORE communities, individually and collectively, while you support CORE members and the communities in which you serve. I, um, I, I would again like to recognize the staff. You don't have to, to stand up, but um, just take a moment and look around. The, the staff here, our small but mighty group, is responsible for this entire conference from picking out the food and the rooms, to the logistics, um, to the content, to everything. Um, everything is done in-house, which is pretty amazing. And they do an amazing job of supporting you all year round. So hand, hand for the staff. <laughs> In sum, we are a, col a collection of integrated, healthy communities that together wield significant amount of power. I applaud our collective accomplishments over the past 35 years and look forward to what we will accomplish together over the next 35 years. In closing, I once again welcome you to the conference and urge you to the make, make the most of your time with your col colleagues here in the core community. Thank you. Thank you.